Hi everyone, I'm going to use this video to show how I've approached the Rohan House Kit from Games Workshop. I'm going to do this ever so slightly differently to how I did the Palisade video in that I'm not going to do a step by step how I built these. I just want to use it to show some of the options that are available in the kit and the sort of things that you can do. So each of the buildings here is built with a single kit. Um, some are more standard than others and a couple have been slightly modified. So what effectively I've gone for is firstly a regular sort of house style, probably a little bit more affluent, probably a local merchant or something along the lines of that. There's a stable building that I've done. Of course, there's a lot of horse head motifs in this, so I've made quite a lot of use of those on this building. And then finally, I've done a sort of probably a, a slightly poorer farm house, smaller building with space for a vegetable patch or whatever. So I'll show you um, one by one really how these have worked and how they work in relation to the actual instructions in the kit. So first things first, this house here is built almost exactly as it is out of the box. If you look on the front here, very, very similar. You've got the porch, regular regular square um, or regular rectangular building, and then you've also got the roof extension there. This is essentially exactly the same. So this has been built out of the box, as is. What I've done here is I've just added a bit of fence at the front and then using some um, balsa wood <coughs> stick that I've got, I've added an extra post here to try and make it look slightly larger. I've also, using some of the spare parts from the porch kit and half of the barrel, made what looks a bit like a water trough just to go out the front of the house. In the same way with the Palisades, these are based on Fomex, shaped with um, my new favourite tool, which is actually a potato peeler. So on a house like this, the instructions um, give you a number of options when it comes to assembling the house. The basic building, basic building blocks for each building is either a smaller piece of wall section or a larger piece of wall section. So when you look at one of these bits, this is one large section. So this is a section like this. And you get different options on what each one looks like. To get the longer sections of wall, you actually have to join two together. So as you can see, this is that one section there. And I have joined on a smaller section. You use connecting plates, I call them plates, they're um, sticks like this. They're sort of T-shaped if you were to be able to look at them profile on. And that basically goes in the middle there, they slot together and it makes a whole section of wall. When you're making a rectangular building like this, it's pretty much one long section along here two sections, no, one long section, one short section along here. And that makes a basic rectangular building. There's lots of options for different porches. This is just a regular one, which attaches on into the thatch. Whereas others, other options are sort of slightly more involved. For this building, I've used the same porch option, but I've gone for a slightly different approach to the actual building itself. So for this, I just made a square using leaf shapes. So the actual building size, so the square footage of the building itself would be much smaller. It's not as long. But what that meant is that when it came to the roof, there was an overhang. This can make quite a good um, sort of like impression of a sort of yard area, little storage bit. I'm probably going to put some barrels in there, maybe a um, little vegetable patch at the front. But this is a slight modification that you can do 
just to make the buildings a bit more interesting. Again, it's got the eaves on here. You've got slightly different options. You've got um, this one's just a sort of window. On this one, you've got quite a grand looking sun on there. For the roofing beams as well, you've got the option of either a normal sort of squared roofing like that, or you can go for something a little bit more fancy with the horses. These ones, I decided to add a couple of horse heads on here. They've just been trimmed off a couple of other sections I used. What I did have to do is create this vertical beam here using um, some balsa wood just to give it a little bit more support, make it look a bit more realistic. These sections here, I cut one of these in half lengthways and just added those in to look like additional walls. And then the fences just come in the kit as is. This final one's a little bit more um, effort. I wanted to do something that looked a bit like a stable but to do that, it needed to be hollow inside. So what I've effectively got is a long section, a short section, and a long section. And I've done three sides of the building. To do the roof, I've used one of the triangular segments of the porch. And again, I've cut two segments of the building to make some frontage here. What I did need to do additionally is cut some balsa pillars again on here to make it give it some support and I also use balsa inside to make the framework for the beams because this doesn't have a wall across the front in here you'll be able to see inside this building so I wanted to try and make it look like if you're looking down on the tabletop that at least there's something in there what I might try to do as well is using some of the fencing make it look like you've got individual stalls within the building itself. It doesn't matter too much because you'll never be able to get to see too far into it, but it's just a little bit of extra detail. This uses a different type of porch. This is an open porch. Again, the instructions are in the book. And it's come out quite nicely. So, I've got five kits. For those of you who can count, there are three buildings here. That means I've got two left. What I'm planning on doing is doing something slightly larger for the next build. I want to do a building which is in effect double length. Now I've started assembling some of the pieces and I'll show you in a minute, but the basic idea is to go for a regular rectangle on one end and a square on the other with the roof connected so that it leaves an archway in the middle. Should be easy enough but we'll wait and see. I then want to try do a couple of porches, so probably a porch at each end. And I might try to make it so that one of the porches is closed, so it just looks like a sort of slightly, slightly extension end rather than having a um, door there. I want it to look a bit more like a, a pub or a um, inn. So I'm going to use quite a bit, few barrels on this one, um, try to see what I get to. I've assembled a couple of bits already, so I can show you what it looks like. So I've assembled the roof slats. So this is two of the slats put together. So you can already see how long the building's going to be compared to the other ones. It's quite looking forward to it, should be good. What I'm gonna do now is just pause very quickly and show you something else I'd worked on. So what we've got here is a signal fire I've been working on. This has been made using a very cheap flickering LED um, tea light that I got from Hobbycraft. I think I got a pack of four for two pounds. So 50p per tea light, which is pretty good because they do come with batteries. Um, I've experimented around, I've broken a couple, but if that happens to you, keep the batteries because the batteries are always useful. I've built it with a... Um, this is stuffing from a 
company on eBay. They sell it for, I think, I can't remember if it was teddy bears or if it was for cushions. It's a little bit better than using something like cotton wool because cotton wool, of course, does absorb water and doesn't really stay as, um, keep its shape. This does need to be painted just so that it looks a bit better than what it does. The actual thing itself, as you can see, is just a, a balsa wood frame. Some matchsticks cut up on the top and then painted it with some grey uh, brown paint for the woodwork and then where the fire is actually. I've done some grey dry brushing. These are pretty good because it's just a basic tea light. You can take this off. Um, I've seen some people do some quite cool stuff with hot glue and they've made it look a bit more like a flame, like a fire. I might try that or I might just use the hot glue to stick it onto there. They're pretty good because they're just a little switch on the bottom. Turns them off. But that's going to be um, one of the features of the village. Just something a little bit different, a little bit extra for people to look at. So um, at the moment, I think it's two weeks until the um, East Anglia Communities GT. It's being held the same weekend as the Warhammer World GT so hopefully these will be finished by then and we'll have some stuff to go on the table um, I've left it a little bit late I've kind of I kind of lost the mojo for a week or two with these buildings and kind of let them slip away from me so I'm gonna try and get some paint on them tonight and hopefully finish them by the end of the weekend giving me a chance to work on the bigger build for a little bit longer so thanks for watching um, I'll come back after I've started to assemble some bits on the larger build and I'll show you my progress then. Cheers! So in this final segment I'm going to show you what I've managed to create with two kits and I've tried to go for something which looks a little bit like a tavern, something a bit larger than the one house kits that I've built so far and something that tries to do something a little bit different um, in terms of the layout. So. As I mentioned, this uses two kits. I've also nicked some spares here and there from the other kits that I've made as I've gone along. And this one is also going to—it's going to benefit from a lot of things. Like there's lots of spare barrels that come with the kits, so I'm going to use those for this as well. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a stinking cold at the moment. So this uses two kits. And in effect, what I've done is I've made one regular length house and then one shortened house. So if you recall the other ones I've got, uh, the other houses I've built, this shortened house used this almost as sort of like a, a, a gable end. I don't know if that's the right word for it, like an extension of the thatch, which was supported with its own um, structure. Whereas what I've done here is I've continued it across so that it all forms one roof. What I will probably do is add in a support pole in the middle because then it looks a bit more realistic to think that these are actually supported. The roof is supported in the middle. <coughs> I've used a regular porch at this end. So my thinking was that this is going to be like the, the drinking hall end and then this is going to be the storage end. So I've used a regular porch, made sure that this one has the um, leaded windows in the majority of cases. Um, it has got some slat windows at the end here and then on each porch. For this, I decided that rather than adding the door, I would use one of the short sections of wall to create what looks like a little extension. It's worked quite well. Um, it doesn't fit together perfectly, so I had to trim some bits and pieces. I also ran out of corner sections um, for the walls. So that was a bit of a pain as well because you only get I think it's six per kit and I've used some of my other ones and then I've just added these extra extension bits here if this is the storage area that's why they've got very basic windows and a very basic door so if you think about it, this is probably where they they store all their food and their booze and in here's where they drink it all both segments along here I just plain wall so there's no other access in and out and yeah it's coming out quite well it's going to need some um, some green stuff here and there because these segments of thatch didn't attach 100% in some of the areas 
So a little bit of green stuff. Um, my hope was to get this finished for the not GT, but unfortunately, with painting all the other bits and getting that done, um, I don't know if I'm going to have this final building finished. So it might be that this building comes with me part done and then comes home um, to be finished off while the other buildings get left behind. So it's all in all going quite well at the moment and I need to get some more black primer so I can prime this and then once it's primed I can start painting it. So thanks for watching. I hope this has been useful for people. Um, apologies for it not being as step by step as the previous videos um, but it's much easier with these just to talk about the kit once it's assembled rather than trying to show you fiddly bits here and there <coughs> so um thanks for watching and hopefully you'll see this building again when i do the painting one thanks bye